The Romero shotgun is often praised for being the best value in the bayou. I mean, what's not to love? It costs $34, the full length version has the tightest spread of all the shotguns, which gives it the furthest one hit kill range, and the non Alamo versions can carry two ammo types which means infinite versatility. And honestly, it might be the best weapon in the game, and it's super fun to use. Last one is stacked, it might be long. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, nice, nice, Let's nice. Go. Oh, in the kneecap. Oh my God, you love to see it. Hello? Oh, shit! <laughs> oh my god. That was disgusting. I can't lie to you. Okay, full disclosure, I hate this gun. I would rather take the 1895 equivalent of Mentos and Coca-Cola, swirl that in my character's mouth, and fire that sweet volley of nerve tonic than take the Romero. But, obviously, it is my civic duty to cover every weapon. So, in parts of this video, it might sound like I'm having fun. I'm not. But let's talk about the Romero. One of the primary strengths of the Romero is that it can take two types of ammo, and given that it has five ammo options, including buckshot, there is room for a lot of flexibility in how you use it, with one small caveat, which we will talk about. So, the four custom ammo options for the Romero are as follows. Starshell ammo, which shoots flares. Dragon breath, which turns hunters into flares. Penny shot, which shoots an erratic barrage of your laundry money. And slugs for those who want a shotgun and change their mind. Starshell ammo is mostly a meme, but it's a fun meme. Dragon Breath has more range than Buckshot, but it's pretty inconsistent for one-hit kills. It's great for pressure though, and it is fun to ignite enemies, especially on night maps, when it looks like a scene from Ori and the Blind Forest. Penny Shot gets the job done in close quarters, but don't expect to be sniping anyone. And Slugs, well, if you don't mind the occasional frustrating arm shot, then yes you can expect to snipe anyone. I just slugged that man. The Romero has five variants. For the full length versions, there is the base variant, the Alamo, and the Talon. And okay, I don't want to take sole credit for the Alamo being added to the game, but I mean, I talked about it and here it is. So maybe subscribe to the channel or I'm gonna talk about something you don't want in the game, like anime waifus or something. Wait, does that count? Crytek, does that count? Oh god. The Alamo variant has this neat Alofs automatic reloading magazine. It can hold five in the tube and will automatically cycle the next shell between shots. It's too clunky to really compete with the Spectre or the Slate, but the action does make follow-up shots more consistent. However, the biggest trade-off is that you are forced to take only one ammo type. So, naturally, I put Starshell in mine. We're on fire. You're baiting the enemies. Clearly not very practical, but expect a full video in the future. The Romero Talon has a blade that does 330 heavy melee damage, which is great for armored AI or bosses. The other two variants are the Romero Hand Cannon and the Romero Hatchet. The Hand Cannon is a medium slot version of the base Romero, and the Hatchet is, well, the same thing, but now with a blade, kind of like that Underworld crossover that never happened. Still kind of sad about that. The key difference between the long versions and the shorties is the spread of the pellets. In Hunt Showdown, pellet spread is determined by barrel length. The base Romero has the tightest spread of all the shotguns in the game. The hand cannon is somewhere toward the middle. Generally speaking, the spread pattern of each shotgun will affect its ideal range, but given the RNG nature of the pellet spread, 
the effective one-hit kill range of the Romero is a shoulder shrug. Which brings us to my problem with this gun. It is far too inconsistent. Either it kills your enemy, or it doesn't. And there isn't much you can do to determine which it's going to be, aside from taking the shot. And on the 50% chance it isn't that sick kill shot you were hoping for, you then have a 3 second reload and nowhere to go. So, then you have to go all streamer mode, and I mean, you know how streamers are. They're like, my movement, and they're like, hopping, like, I'm just kidding. But you get it. If it works, it works, but my heart has been broken too many times to put myself back out there. Another issue I have with the Romero is that it's like my dumb fat cat. In most situations, it's useless. And when it is finally close enough to do something, it would much rather roll over and do nothing. Each user is different, but just looking at the logistics of the Romero, it's hard to make it work. Here's you, here's its effective range, and here's everywhere it can't do anything for you at all. Consider this section an acknowledgement that the Romero doesn't really fit my playstyle, but it might fit yours. So let's talk about how to make it work. Much like the crossbow, the Romero is best with an element of surprise. What that means for you, practically, is two playstyles, stealth or aggression. If you want stealth, place yourself where you know enemies will come and wait for your moment. Oftentimes, this can mean letting enemies pass to fully capitalize on your advantage. Once your stealth attack is over, you usually have to switch to your other option, aggression. That means pushing weak hunters, using throwables to get people out of position, hive bombs are great for this, and planning your cover in advance. Ironically, the best combination with a Romero is a solid wall to use as cover while you ready your next shell. Learning when to stealth and when to rush are super important for making the Romero work. And on the topic of combinations, what should you take with the Romero? If money isn't a problem, rifle replacements like the Sparks Pistol or the Uppercut can help you in red ranges. But then you should probably answer the question, why are you spending so much money on a pistol and not your primary weapon? If you need more ammo, the Lamat has a shotgun slot that can boost your spare ammo pool. If you hate yourself and love to dance but don't want to drop a few grand on the Dance Dance Revolution arcade machine, tempting, very tempting. Dual Romero hand cannons can be fun to use, especially with slugs and dragon breath, and the Romero hatchet is always there, just in case. So, closing thoughts, while I don't exactly love the Romero and using it feels kind of like a chore, it is one of the better mean weapons in the game because at least when it feels useless, you know it's an uphill battle anyway. With Quartermaster and custom ammo options, the Romero can be slotted into almost any kit. I can't really pick a favorite Romero, but my girlfriend tells me I'm a bit aloof with my emotions. Don't worry, I give her an extra O later. So I guess I recommend the Alamo. At least with an oversized flare gun, it's harder to ignore my cries for help. He's tagged. Flashlight, flashlight. Oh, he killed me. 